After I published Darwin's Black Box, uh, Darwin's Black Box, the point was that some things in life required deliberate, intelligent design. But I, I never thought and didn't say that everything in life required such design. You know, maybe the, the shape of my nose, you know, it could be this or that. It doesn't require specific design. So I was then interested in asking the question, well, if some things do require design and some things don't, where is the kind of broad border line between those things? And when I came up for a title of the book, I try to make it alliterative because so, <laughs> that, that sounds, sounds nicer. So I called it the edge of evolution. The edge of evolution. Where's the difference between things that require design and things that don't? And I guess in retrospect, I, edge of evolution was nice and alliterative, but I should have said the edge of Darwinism because uh, intelligent design is not the opposite of evolution, it's the opposite of Darwinism. Uh, things could descend one from another, but through a purposeful intelligently designed uh, process. So uh, the book explored that question, well, you know, what is beyond random mutation and natural selection? And the uh, main example I used uh, was the de development of resistance for a drug uh, for malaria. Malaria is a disease, of course, that kills a lot of people still, in the world, a very nasty disease. And, uh, but a wonder drug was developed in the 1940s called chloroquine, but gradually uh, malaria became resistant to it. And the underpinnings for the resistance were not discovered until relatively recently in the, in the 2000s. So it was you know, close to you know, five, six years after Darwin's black box that this data came out. And I uh, showed that, in fact, the problem was that for chloroquine resistance, you needed two mutations to occur at the same time. If you had just one of them, that didn't help. You needed two particular changes before uh, malaria was resistant to chloroquine. And it turns out that slowed down the development of, resist, uh, the development of resistance uh, tremendously, tremendously. There are other drugs uh, that will uh, kill malaria, at least in the test tube in the lab. Um, but they, to develop resistance to them, the uh, malarial parasite has to uh, have just one mutation, one particular mutation. And some workers in the field showed that uh, about every third person who was given this other drug, uh, the one that required one mutation, every third person, uh, the malaria developed resistance in them. And uh, it would kill most of them, but the resistant ones would live and then would reproduce. And, Pretty soon the patient is filled with resistant malaria, so a problem. With chloroquine, uh, resistance develops about once every billion patients. So three versus a billion, that's a big, big difference. And it's because the chloroquine requires two mutations at once before it uh, has the resistance. So I, I uh, make some uh, distinctions and some careful, um, careful considerations. But the long and the short of it is that if you need more than one tiny change at a time to get some beneficial effect, then Darwinian evolution is, is really breathing heavy. It cannot, it's having a very tough time. If you need more than just two, you know, you quickly run out of uh, you know, the likelihood of it occurring by Darwinian processes uh, disappears. And I go on in uh, my book, The Edge of Evolution, to say that many, many different biological processes uh, will uh, require multiple uh, mutations before they're going to have an effect. And so the conclusion was that 
design, the edge of evolution goes very deeply into life, much deeper than I thought, much deeper than I argued for, much deeper than I thought uh, in Darwin's black box.